decided to announce uh, James Harden's uh, extension with the with the Rockets. Um, he's got a few more, few more, uh, few more years with us. From the moment uh, James was here, Mr. Alexander uh, said, "I want you to retire uh, as a Rocket." And uh, six more years with with James. Um, my job, you know, every day is to try and put the players around him to to win a championship. That's our only goal here. I know that's James's only goal. Um, the relationship that we have in terms of him pushing me to uh, make the team better uh, and his ability to recruit other players like Chris Paul, we saw yesterday, uh, like the, you know, all the players around the team um, is, you know, the modern way that I think teams are gonna be built. Uh, get a cornerstone player like James uh, and have him uh, bring everyone uh, to the party in Houston. And, uh, you know, we're excited for the next step. We think, you know, next year is going to be the best team we have. And uh, it's all thanks to this guy. Thanks. I think you're supposed to say something. Oh, I am. Um, <laughs> um, it's rare that you, you feel so welcome and feel, feel like you're at home and uh, feel like, you know, Every single, every single day you wake up and you go to work um, and you have people around you that motivate you, um, that push you to be better, and um, that you just love being around. And uh, you know, that's another reason why I signed the extension. I don't plan on going anywhere. I don't want to deal with free agency. I don't want to deal with any of that stuff. I know where home is. I know where I want to be. I know where I want to you know, retire ultimately. And uh, I know where I want to win a championship. And so uh, everything is going to happen here in Houston. And um, well, that's the reason I'm here for forever. <laughs> Open for questions. James, what does it mean to you that the Rockets did all they could as quickly as they could in this situation? What do you mean, the extension? Uh, right, exactly. They did it. everything got done quickly. Yeah, I mean that was that was the plan. You know, I don't want to I don't want to have to go through free agency. I'm sure they don't want me to go through free agency as well. So, um, like I said, I know where home is. Uh, we have the best relationship ever, and, and um, you know. The next step is to win a championship. So, you know, the front office, uh, you know, Mr. Alexander, um, they're going to do their job of trying to get the best players in here, you know, for our team. And uh, you know, my job is to go out there, compete at a high level, and try to, um, you know, try to win as many games as we can. Mike, can you address? You came here a year ago, and people thought you were a little crazy with this idea of James being a point guard and things. Can you just talk about how everything has progressed in, uh, in just a year's time? Well. You know, the thing that was kind of funny is that whatever position he plays, he's going to be really good at it. So it yeah, okay, we put him over the point guard because with what we had, that was the best thing that we could have done. But he's always going to be a point guard on the floor, whether it's a two, the one, the three, it doesn't matter. Um, but he had a phenomenal year last year. And it's, uh, you know, I've coached a lot of people and watched a lot of games. And the stuff that he did in day in, day out was incredible. And now I'm just so excited about, well, he, he's going to be here a long time. So that's good. You are the organization. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah, we're tired. Yeah. <laughs> so that's good. But I'm excited, you know, with the addition of Chris and getting the other guys back and uh, the improvement of Clint Capella. Uh, there's just a lot of positive things happening. And uh, it should be exciting for the fans of Houston. James, what's your time going for? Oh, that's right. I just <laughs> I didn't, he obviously, you know, I didn't have anything much. <laughs> Sorry, you're good. James, what is your vision of this of this pairing with Chris? He talks about being energized and having kind of a new energy looking forward. How do you envision this working out? Well, I can speak for Chris. You know, the last 13 years, he's had to dominate the ball so much just because he didn't have a consistent, you know, somebody to help him, you know, create plays and do other things for him. So, and I, I know how it feels. I mean, these last you know five years, is, you know, I kind of felt that same way as far as just dominating the ball. It kind of feels good to you know get a catch and shoot opportunity or, or just run the floor and not you know four or five possessions in a row and not worry about having to make a play every play, me every possession. So, um, you know, we, we had a good workout, go you know in Vegas, and uh, it, it felt good. It felt good to be out there and just run the floor and just have fun, you know. And so um, it's going to be fun. There's no. There's no point guard, there's no shooting guard. We just go out there and make plays and, and 
make our teammates better. That being said, do you feel like you got worn down a little bit um, as the year went on I mean, last year? I mean, I don't know if it was worn down, but I mean, it's just tough. You know, I don't think anybody uh, in the league had to dominate the ball like I did. So um, it is what it is. I will never complain about it. I'll go out there and just do my job to the best of my ability. And, uh, you know, whatever coach and, you know, the front office or whatever needs me to do, my teammates needs me to do, uh, I'm going to go out there and try to do it. James, when you came here from Oklahoma City, could you have, been, could you have envisioned how this city has embraced you, how this team has embraced you, how you've just really, like, become the face of this team and this franchise? Yeah, it's, it's, it's more than I can ever imagine. You know, uh, from the city, the fans, um, you know, my teammates, and then these guys right here, you know, from you know, Mr. Alexander to Tab, Rayon to Daryl, to even Mike, you know, for this past year, I think we in the back. Um, it's, it's constant communication. Like it's, it's. A, I talk to these people more than my mom, <laughs> more than my family and friends. Uh, you know, it's really a family. And I'm not. I'm not exaggerating it. And um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't you know, rather be in any other place than here. I was going to ask you kind of about that a little bit. The communication that this organization has with you about the team itself, transactions and plans and things. Do you have a feel for how? unusual or unique even that might be across the league and what has that meant to this general feeling you described of, of feeling more welcome here? I think it's definitely unique. I just I know previous situations it wasn't it wasn't like that. So uh, it is not just with me, you know, it's with the other guys, other teammates as well. So um, it's, it's literally one big family and, and um, I know how unique it is. I know how, how special it is to feel you know welcome and feel loved. Um, and treated normal, you know, so uh, they, humble, they humble me every day, um, you know, and that's what strives me to go out there and work hard and, and try to be the best James I can be. Yesterday, Chris mentioned that since the trade, you and he have communicated every single day. Can you share any of what you've talked about and how much has that energized you for next season? I'm talking about everything, you know, everything off the course of life. Um, obviously, one to win and just, you know, how can we make our team better? How can we make our team better? How can we make our teammates better than we have now? You know, and uh, that's going to be the most important thing. How can we, you know, rally these guys up every single day and motivate them every single day to want to go out there and just, just do whatever it takes to win? So, uh, you know, both it's new, new positions for both of us, and I think communication is going to get us over that hump. You know, literally, we that's no lie. We talk every single day. Do you look at this as the two of you creating something new? Or is there something that we can look at at any point in basketball and say, oh, it's kind of going to look like those two on the court together? Uh, I, don't, I don't think anybody's ever seen anything like that before. Two, two guys that can create and, and facilitate and just do things with the ball that nobody's done, um, you know, from the, from the one position in the shooting guard position. So uh, it's going to be fun. I'm, I'm excited to, to be a part of it. Um, and I'm sure, I'm sure he is and our teammates as well. Since you said you wanted to be here, I mean, you're going to be here forever for your whole career. What do you want, I don't know, your legacy to be? What do you want to build here? Like, what's the most important thing that you want to be known for being here? Um, well, first of all, you know, the legacy has to come with championships. You know, that's going to you know, solidify it. But just knowing that uh, I was very impactful in the community, very impactful, you know, in the city of Houston. And, um, that I did it the right way, you know. It was a, it was a, um, you know, lead first uh, example guy, um, you know, kind-hearted and just uh, loved. You know, that's that's the most important thing. Um, the people that I surround myself with every single day, the people that I work for and work with every single day, uh, make them feel like um, I'm normal and, and you know they can talk to me about anything. James, when you're talking to Chris before the trade or PJ before you sign or whoever it is you're trying to get here, what are the things that you're emphasizing? What are your selling points for this franchise? I can't, I can't tell you that. <laughs> nah, um, obviously, you know, we just have we have the best organization, you know, from top to bottom, and uh, it just, you know, I think everybody's seen it last year. Um, you know, you get the right pieces in here, and it can be fun. We can do something really special. And you add, you know, Mike to the to the mix. Um, you know, I think people seen the glimpse of what, you know, what could be last year. And I feel like Chris, you know, saw himself in that situation at the point guard. And, um, you, know, you know, hopefully we can go further than that. James, obviously Daryl and the organization is always looking to improve the team and make it better capable of the team. Do you feel like the team you have today, the roster you have today, is capable of the championship? Oh, for
for sure. <clears throat> for sure. We have another, we have a Hall of Famer. We just added a Hall of Famer guy that um, IQ is probably you know, one of the best to ever do it. Uh, passing ability. Um, defensively, he's, he's, a, he's a beast. Um, you know, he just brings so much to our team that, you know, we didn't, we didn't really have, you know. And, and so um, adding him, you know, you know, to help other guys, uh, younger guys like Clint, um, it, it makes our team that much better. And, and when you're going to, uh, you know, to compete against a championship and a team like, you know, Golden State, um, the defending champions, you have to have that ability on the court uh, to give yourself a chance. James, James, Chris yesterday talked about sacrifice, and that's something that you guys have talked about in terms of your conversations yeah. the last three weeks. And that's something that will be emphasized with the rest of the team. What, what is what is specifically about sacrifice and the fact that you guys are coming together and forming this kind of new thing that's so important? Um, I think sacrifice comes with communication. I don't think you know either Chris or myself or any of our teammates are you know are selfish. So it's just about communication. I think that's the only way we're going to get through this thing. You know, Chris might, you know, be accustomed to some things that I'm not, or vice versa. So as long as as long as we can talk our way through it and uh, just figure it out, which you know is pretty pretty will be pretty simple. Uh, we'll be all right. But I mean, whether it's you know him getting on me about sh catching shooting open shots because we hadn't had it before, or uh, or you know the other way around. But um, we got we got a, a great veteran group. Um, that wants to win, and um, you know we're all on the same page. Change the words. words. If you, when you hear them, I'm sure you've heard them or seen them since the news of the contract. The richest contract in the history of the sport. How does that hit you when it's your name followed by those words? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, honestly, um, sounds good, but honestly, the only thing that at this far now in my career is winning. Like to win a championship, the money is cool. You know, I work extremely hard. You know, thanks to uh, Mr. Alexander for giving me that opportunity. But uh, it doesn't really mean anything without you know holding that championship up. So that's what we're working towards. That's why I'm in the gym every single day, and uh, and I won't stop until I get it. Does it uh, humble you to think about that? I mean, everything that you've gone through in your life up to this point, and. I'm like wow! I'm yeah, I'm, make the I'm most always humble. I'm always humble. I'm always uh, open to listen and learn. I always feel like I can get better. Um, I'm just a student. I'm a student of life, and, and I mean, never gonna get too high, never gonna get too low. But just trying to stay level and even, even killed, and uh, you know, be the best that I can be every single day. James, everybody in this room knew the frustration of that Spurs series, how it ended. How much does that motivate you? What happened? The way that series ended. Oh, for sure. Looking it forward. It motivates me. Um, you know, of course, it didn't how we wanted it in, how I wanted it in. But uh, that's what life is about. <laughs> you know, you get tested. You go through certain things where things don't happen your way, or happen the way you would like them, or envision them. Um, you have to sit back, look at look at how you can be better, <clears throat> go out there and just be better at it. And if you fail, do it again. James, that right there. Yeah, I think that's one of the reasons why Chris, you know, came here as well, because he know he knew that basically we were the two that you know has been close and hasn't got to where we want to go, and coach, you know. So we all have the same goal. We all have the same mindset. Uh, Trevor has one. He wants to get back. Uh, you know, Eric wants to get one. You know, all the guys are motivated on the same page, so it's gonna work out. Can you, you share how long you've known Chris and how long that relationship's been? Because it's. I think it's kind of a surprise a lot of people that you guys were as close as you were. That's a, your primary reason why you came. Well, I mean, I've known Chris obviously for for some years, and, and uh, the the Olympics has helped us in our helped our relationship. And then we just you know, you know kept in contact over the years, um, you know. But you know, Trevor, you know, is really close to him. We have a lot of guys that are really close to him, so it made it uh, it made it easier for him to um, you know want to come here. Um, He's a, he's a very humble guy as well. You know, he just wants to win. He listens. Uh, even 13 years in, he still listens. Uh, he still feels like he can learn and be better. So it just all makes sense. Mike, I think I saw you nodding uh, with an unprecedented this pairing. 
Um, you, you've been around the league a long time with, with this skill set. Is that is that an accurate? He doesn't really have a coach. I see that you're good at life. I know you don't want me to coach. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be better. Um, I'm trying to think through the years. I'm you know I'm sure, but as they did some examples of two point guards, and it really wasn't great examples. You know, at one point I think Jason Kidd played with somebody in Phoenix, um, Kevin Johnson. Kevin Johnson. So, but, you know, they didn't, I don't know if they played together, but they weren't shooters like these guys at the same time, point guards. And, you know, players just keep getting better. And these guys are two of the best in the game. And, and uh, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be fun. You talk about um, this being a family a lot, like you keep saying it. Do you feel like you've grown in this family and you've kind of, not just on the court, but like grown into a man and a leader and just overall? Yes, yes. Uh, obviously, you know, on the court, I've grown, but off the court, as a businessman, uh, I work with these guys, especially Tad Brown, um, a lot. Just to, you know, he's, he's so smart, he's been through it all. So he helps me, um, you know, He's like a, you know, kind of a father, um, but he helps me. He helps me just, um, just to get through every single day um, with the struggles that I have. Uh, any questions about anything, you know, he's there for me. And so, um, you know, that's what keeps me humble. That's what keeps me sane sometimes. Errol, this is kind of an unprecedented um, contract in terms of length because you, the original contract and now the extension. Your GM has talked a lot about flexibility, including the podcast with Wilson. How does a contract of this length, when you don't know what the cap is going to be in the future, kind of impact things for you and your flexibility? Yeah. <laughs> this is this. Some of our some of our decisions are hard. This one's <laughs> this one's easy. This one's uh, you know the uh, um, we we we'd do more if we could. I mean, this is the most they allow us to do. Um, you know, you work your whole career, like myself, to get a player of James's caliber and now Chris's caliber, and um, you know, we're we're excited. I mean, I think the reality is, you know, starting with Mr. Alexander's philosophy even before James was here, the players are the ones who create, you know, who who make the team win or lose, win the champions or not. So the relationship with them has always been strong, and. We want to work with them to create uh, the championship teams, and and I think it's it's the teams that recognize that that are going to win going forward in the league. And um, yeah, we would have done longer and more money if we could. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, everyone. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> Congrats. Yes.